Well, though, meanwhile, radical Islamic terrorism is now a central issue in the 2016 presidential race. With some critics slamming President Obama's handling of the threat from ISIS, they call his Oval Office address Sunday night, quote, predictable and partisan. Here's some of what some Republican candidates are saying about that. We're at war with radical Islamic terrorism, and this president continues to deny that. When you have President Obama <laughs> telling the nation that the Islamic State isn't Islamic, that's just nutty. This clearly was a terrorist attack almost from the minute it happened, and yet Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama started talking about gun control. Barack Obama went to Paris talking about climate change. He is delusional. Well, is all that fair? Jerry Seib is the Washington Bureau Chief for the Washington, uh, Wall Street Journal and joins us now. You know, Jerry, has the terrorist attack, as it seems, uh, changed the whole tone of this campaign? Yeah, I think it has. And, you know, whether that's permanent or not is a different question. But, you know, Chris Christie's been saying this whole campaign changed three or four weeks ago with the Paris attacks, certainly changed further with San Bernardino. I do think we've seen in our polling, even before those attacks, you had terrorism and national security uh, inching up as a top issue and the economy inching down as a top issue. So I do think it's changed the campaign, and that probably changes the way not just the candidates approach it, but the way the voters are ultimately going to approach the candidates, especially on the Republican side. Yeah, and who do you think it helps? Well, I think it probably does help Chris Christie. I mean, he's got a good voice on this. Uh, he had been kind of disappearing from view, but now he can talk as a former federal prosecutor. He used to handle terrorism cases. That's a pretty potent message right now. I think it probably helps Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio because a little bit of experience uh, and, and a tough policy, and they, have, they both have both of those things when it comes to the fight in Syria, probably helps. May help Donald Trump. You know, we've been talking about it endlessly, obviously, uh, on the, in, in the sense that it, being a tough guy is beneficial right now. That may help. On the other hand, he may have finally gone too far yesterday. And we'll see how that plays well, out. I think, think it hurts. Do you think, do you think it did go too far? I mean, we've been, people have been saying every time something come, pops out of his mouth that he's gone too far. Well, that's true. I, I certainly think that he's never said anything that united the Republican Party against him the way he has in the last 24 hours. So how voters react, we'll see. But certainly the idea in the party itself, uh, which is to say among other leaders that he's gone too far, um, has really been different this time. And I think that's meaningful. We'll see how meaningful it is to voters. Some will like it. Some will not like it. Um, you know, that, that remains to be seen. But I do think this controversy is different in that sense. Yeah, and how about Ted Cruz? I mean, he came out about that commercial over the weekend saying he's going to kill the terrorists. Yeah, that's true, although the, the, Senator Cruz has a little bit of a difficult problem because he's not really wanted to get involved in the fight in Syria, and the root of the ISIS problem is, in fact, its base, its caliphate in Syria, so he's having to juggle a little bit. I think it's a bit of a mixed bag for him. I think it hurts Ben Carson. I mean, not to, have, to be very soft-spoken and not have uh, any real experience in this space is not a, an especially good place to be right now, and that's where he is. Uh, uh, you know, and I think that's probably showing up a little bit already in poll numbers. And what about the way it's kind of boomeranged on President Obama, especially after the speech on Sunday night that for, for many has come under criticism. Look what Investors Business Daily writes today. The optics of Obama's speech were tone deaf. For some unknown reason, he decided to haul his presidential podium into the Oval Office and stand it up in front of the desk. Maybe he did it so he could pretend to be speaking before an adoring crowd, or perhaps it was to save time since he had a Kennedy Center event to rush off to right after his speech. Whatever the case, he did nothing to assure Americans only 25 percent satisfied with the job he's done in ISIS so far that he has any idea of how to do better. How does this or does this carry over to Hillary and what does she do to try and counter that? Well, we'll see. I mean, you know, I think there's a philosophical divide. I think the Kennedy senator comment is a, is a bit of a low blow, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, we'll see because uh, there's, a, there's a real philosophical divide between the president and most Republicans on how to approach this topic. There's, a, there's kind of a, a slow and steady versus fast and furious difference of opinion in which one is the most effective and which helps and which hurts uh, the cause against ISIS. I think Hillary Clinton is probably, it's a two-edged sword for her. On the one hand, uh, she, you know, she's more experienced than, and she does know the world. That helps her. On the other hand, um, you know, and, and by the way, she's also tried to strike a, a tougher tone on Syria in particular than the president for a long while now. On the other hand, if the president's ratings on national security go down, she rides them down with him to some extent. So I think it's a mixed bag for her. I do, I do think it hurts Bernie Sanders because he wants to talk about income inequality. It's hard to get uh, to break through the static right now on that topic when everybody wants to talk about terrorism and ISIS. Yeah, and two years ago or more, Hillary wanted to arm the uh, Syrian rebels. The president turned, uh, turned that down, and some say ISIS may not have uh, metastasized the way it has now if that action was taken. Jerry Seibel, right. Wall Street, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, she'll find ways to remind us of that, I'm quite sure, in the coming days. <laughs> At, uh, the coming year, you're right. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Seibel, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us here. Thank you. Of course.